on press go hello and welcome to our viewers i'm terry edwards today i'd like to welcome the author teacher and broadcaster mark chatterton over the years mark has written several F articles for the spirit guides website as well as interviewing several top names in contemporary spirituality and metaphysics these have included Evan Alexander, Lorna Byrne, Diana Cooper, and Anthony Peake. Last year, Mark had his first Mind, Body, and Spirit book published, The Power of Thankfulness. Now in 2021, Mark is here to talk about his new book about meditation. It's called Meditation, A Practical Guide. So welcome, Mark. Thank you, Terry. To start the ball rolling, can I ask you, why did you decide to write the book? Well, I've been thinking about writing a book about meditation on and off for a few years now. And um, I've actually been practicing meditation for well over 20 years. And it's something that's quite close to my heart because I, I found it's really helped me over the years just to become a calmer, more happier, contented person. And there's so many benefits which I mentioned in the book. So mm. back in uh, November of 2020, I, I had to go into hospital for an operation on my foot and I was incapacitated for quite a few weeks. And during the day, I, I just thought, yes, I'll start doing it now. And I, I found it flowed quite easily and, and um, I, I managed to get it all complete by Christmas. So once we'd done all the editing and checking and everything, we brought it out in the new year of 2021. So what would you say are the main types of meditation? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because the actual definition of meditation is, it varies from people to people because obviously with meditation, it's a lot of people associate it with um, a religious thing, especially in um, with Hinduism and Buddhism and so on. Meditation yeah. has been around for thousands of years, but in the West, meditation in more recent years has become synonymous with um, ways of learning to be calmer and so on away from the, the religious type of thing so um, the, the definition is quite difficult I actually wrote it in the book so if you don't mind I'll just read what I think is probably one of the best definitions of meditation um, it says meditation is the practice of thinking deeply or focusing one's mind for a period of time. This can be done in silence or with the help of chanting and is done for a number of reasons, ranging from rel religious or spiritual purposes to a method for evoking relaxation. So that hopefully sort of covers all the different strands. But in yeah. the book, I mention eight main types of meditation. Some people might argue there's more than that. Some people might say there's less than that, but those are the ones that I think cover cover all the different bases. So the main one, which a lot of the book is about, is about mindfulness meditation. That's one. And then you also get um, yoga meditation, where a lot of people who practice yoga tend to meditate as they do that. Um, there's loving kindness meditation, vipassana meditation, walking meditation, chakra meditation, and transcendental meditation. So these are, are the main types, but I go into detail about what each one involves and so on for the reader in that sense. Yes. There's a lot about mindfulness on the internet and in the media nowadays. How would you define mindfulness? Right, again, that is a difficult question to answer, but it, um, a lot of people, when you think of mindfulness, you think of filling your mind when in fact it's almost like the opposite. But in simple terms, mindfulness is being mindful or, or aware of something. So the idea of meditation for a lot of traditions is to empty your mind, to, to free it of all thoughts and so on. So what I say in the book is it's like... Um, if you've got all these thoughts going on in your mind and you're trying to clear it is think of like a conveyor belt with all your thoughts going past you and then 
you are aware of them, you're mindful of them, but they're not affecting you. You're just letting them go so you can concentrate on the actual meditation itself. And um, mindfulness has become quite big in recent years. For example, the NHS, they, they uh, are, are quite keen on it to help people to calm, calm themselves and um, overcome addictions and so on. And I do go... Uh, do quite a bit about how uh, meditation in general has lots of advantages and so on and a lot of all of these are backed by science where there's been a lot of research going on but for example um, it can make you happier, confident, um, more focused, you sleep better, you appreciate nature for example and it can help you overcome addiction but there's a whole chapter on that but getting back to the idea of mindfulness it's basically focusing your mind learning it to co learning to concentrate and not let all the things going on outside in the world to, to come in and affect your concentration mm. so what why do you think meditation is becoming so popular nowadays well i mentioned in the book about how back in the 60s the beatles sort of uh, popularized it a lot when they got involved with this guy called the Maharishi and he came to England and was lecturing and so on and I think it's firstly through George Harrison that, um, that they got involved and then they actually went and spent a few months at the Maharishi's ashram in India and obviously anything to do with the Beatles there, there were lots of news reporters and television crews following them around the world wherever they went and through through them it became popular a little bit in the west obviously it had been going on anyway for example monks had used meditation for centuries in the christian church and then as people moved around the world more and more and um, from different religions they they sort of spread it anyway and nowadays um it's all part of the the wellness movement which is uh something that isn't necessarily religious or spiritual but it's about how in this stressful world you can be happier and calmer and well basically so you know, i think also the the fact that we've had this big pandemic going on for the last year or so a lot of people have had a chance to sort of reassess their lives and think why am i here what am i doing with my life etc and meditation has become popular through that as well so you know on television for example um there's certain programs where you can watch where they have sort of mindfulness where they've got like lots of streams flowing or walking through a forest or something and that that's all designed to help you um do yeah. meditation be mindful and so on so it's everywhere and there's so much on the internet as well so my book hopefully will sort of help it make it clear for anyone who wants to find out about meditation as well as people who are already into it there's quite a few other things which we can talk about in a minute which um, other aspects of meditation that people can do right mm. um, so if you're new to meditation what's the best way to get into it well i'd say read the book um, not literally of course but you know, obviously the book does does explain, but um, maybe either you can look do searches on the internet and have a look at some videos or um, teachings, or you could buy buy a tape or a CD or whatever. But locally, it might be worth once lockdown has finished and people are mixing again, just see what what's going on locally in your area. Um, I say in the book that you could uh, look at some shops or or um, sort of health food shops or things like that where they have all these adverts and see if there's any local groups and then you could join a, a guided meditation which is a, a good way into it where mm -hmm. someone leads the group and tells you what to do because obviously if you're new to it you're not sure how to begin but it does say all, all about that in the book anyway I go through mm -hmm. how you can prepare and get in the right sort of place and room and frame of mind and so on but um, you know the, there's lots out there but you you just got to see where you're led really i think as well and, and just see see where where you're you're taken to 
yeah. and make sure you know what you're letting yourself in for because obviously meditation is not something that you can just quickly do it's something that you've got to learn and experience for yourself and yeah. gradually get into yeah. it more and more yeah okay uh, in the book you mention using colors in meditation can you tell us a little bit about what this involves? Yeah, um, I've I've always sort of used colours. When I when I start to meditate, I always find a different colour comes into my mind and helps me to focus. And there's there's two different aspects of using colours because colours each colour has a different sort of energy. For example, red you think of it as passion or commitment and so on. And I, I go into detail about each colour and how they have different aspects or energies and so on. But what I find is if it's hard to concentrate and get into meditation, I think of a colour first of all, and then through that colour, I, I sort of get into the meditation. But um, when you think of a colour, it, it's sort of hard to um, sort of concentrate. So what I say is think of an object or something that is to do with that colour. So if you're um, thinking yellow, you could think of yellow type flowers like daffodils yeah. or a yellow fruit like a banana or a melon. You don't sort of concentrate on that all the time, obviously, but you, you just take the essence of that colour into the meditation. Then once you're in the, the state of meditation, you can disreg dis disregard it and then just focus on what you're meant to be focusing on. Or alternatively, you can focus on the colour and just see where that takes you. So you could do a whole meditation on a particular colour, if you like. So yeah. that, that's how I, I use it. But I've explained it in a lot more detail in the book yeah, about that as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, you also mentioned the chakras in your book. How are the chakras used in meditation? Right. Well, chakras, um, for those who don't know, are, are these um, spiritual... Uh, etheric type um, circles or or vortexes or whatever that energy centers that mm. that have been around and they've been in eastern religions for thousands of years mm -hmm. um, but in the last century uh, the early 1900s they were popularized through the work of uh, Charles Ledbetter and Alice Bailey who are oh, yeah. part, part of the Theosophical Society and they saw a connection between the chakras and the body's endocrine system which is certain glands within your body which release hormones to help the body to maintain a healthy yes. to be healthy and to keep you well and overcome any illnesses or diseases and they sort of put the two together if you like and um through that, I've, I've done a whole chapter about chakras and how, how you can use them in meditations. For example, yeah. some, some people like to focus on each of the seven main chakras in the body when they meditate every time. Others like to say, I will concentrate on one chakra, say the heart chakra on one day and the base chakra on another day and so on. Mm -hmm. So the idea is with using chakras in meditation, is you're helping to make your body better and overcome any illnesses or diseases within it and also just help yourself to be spiritually stronger and uh, you know, and so on so that's the idea you know that as i say there's a lot in in the chapter about it but um it's you know i've just briefly explained it there now yeah okay well thank you mark Anything else that you would like to say about the book? Yeah, I mean, apart from all these different things um, that I've mentioned about what is meditation, the different types, the benefits, how to actually go about meditation, which is quite important. There's a whole chapter on that. And then what to do once you get into a meditative state. What, what are you looking for? I, I sort of mention there's a thing that I call the three S's, which mm. are silence stillness and something by that i mean ideally when you meditate it, you should hopefully be silent obviously there's exceptions to that some people like to have a bit of background music going on which is fine if you want to do that i actually sometimes meditate outside and you get all the birds singing but i find that quite 
peaceful and calming as well. So you don't necessarily have to meditate in silence, but that is one of the S's. Yes. The other thing, yeah. obviously, is stillness. You need to be still and away from all the distractions so you can concentrate better. And then finally, something I would say, hopefully you will find something in your meditation that will help you, guide you, tell you which way to go, what your what the future way to go or whatever. So th those things are mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. Then of course, there's the chapters on the colors, the chapter on, on the chakras. There's also a chapter where I've included several guided meditations, which you can do whenever you like at home. Mm -hmm. And, and they, I go through things like um, maybe going on a journey, looking out in the countryside, and I give lots of examples and suggestions of other meditations that you can do. And then finally, there's a, a chapter on resources where I explain about how to get involved maybe locally with a group. There's, there's lots of links to meditation retreats that are quite popular and where people go away either in this country or abroad and they meet other people to come just go on med meditation retreats or do other things as well like yoga or walking and so on so there's a whole whole different thing so it it covers everything you need to go about meditation that's why it's called a practical guide yes mm. well thanks very much mark that's very interesting i i've read the book i can recommend it yeah thank thank you terry um just to say if you if you want to buy the book it is both as a printed book and as an ebook, you can get it. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from the publishers, which is HadleyBooks.co.uk, and you can get it from um, through my my own website, which is MarkChatterton.com. Mm. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Thanks.